नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरीवन एसोसिएट एडिटर ऑफ फाइनेंशियल टाइम मिस क्लर्क डिस्टिंग्विश्ड गेस्ट एंड फ्रेंड्स वंस अगेन नमस्कार टू यू ऑल द सेकंड फाइनेंशियल टाइम्स एनर्जी ट्रांजिशन समिट इट इज ट्यूली शेपिंग द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द ग्लोबल क्लीन एनर्जी डिबेट I am pleased to be here today and uh, all you are present here either uh, you are reporting the development of the renewable energy or you yourself are the developers or manufacturers so i am very happy to be among you all and uh, also i am very happy to share the insight on india's energy transition in these 11 years before i begin let me acknowledge how the financial times is bringing together decision makers investors and the innovators on a single platform for the next two days by convening such a dialogue this summit strengthens the momentum of the global energy transition and ensure that ambition is matched by action just like india india's rise in renewable energy has been extraordinary in just a few years india has become the global force rapidly expanding the solar wind and green hydrogen projects according to the latest international energy agency report india now ranks third in the world after china and us for the growth in the power generation capacity over the past 5 years we we stand at number 3 in the world today when it be dr fateh birol of iea who noted that india's clean energy transition is rapidly underway benefiting the entire world roberto bocca of the world economic forum who called the progress remarkable the message is clear the world believes in india's renewable energy story friends after all in the last decade india has made remarkable strides in the renewable energy under the committed leadership of prime minister shri modi the country has expanded its installed non fossil capacity to approximately 252 gigawatt as of today means we have crossed more than 50% of the installed energy capacity by the renewable energy which we are supposed to achieve by 2030 but we have achieved it 5 years ahead of the time we have already crossed the milestone of halfway target of 500 gigawatt so our target by 2030 is 500 gigawatt which we have announced which we have pledged now out of that 252 we have done and 252 in it was uh, uh, 2014 it was 74 gigawatt and today it is 250 gigawatt this is the change in last uh, 10 11 years of uh, modi regime and more or india has also achieved 50% of installed elect electric capacity from the non fossil fuel Five years ahead of its target set and its nationally determined contribution to the Paris Agreement. In fact, among the G20 countries, India is the only nation to achieve its 2030 goals by 2021. No other country has achieved it. We have been at the forefront of the initiatives aimed at. climate change mitigation this growth reflects the extraordinary expansion over the last decade india's total renewable capacity has surged 
by 210 percent. As earlier I said, it was 74 gigawatt, and now it is 250 gigawatt today. Whatever is being done, it is done in last 11 years, especially in wind and hydro and battery storage, pump storage. It is being done in last 11 years. Solar power has increased. In 2014, it was 2.82 gigawatt. Today, it is 124 gigawatt. An increase of around 4,300 percent. While wind energy has grown from 21 gigawatt to 57, 52.7, almost 53 gigawatt, an increase of 150 percent. There are some issues of the locations here that also we are going to solve. And I think that is also rapidly it is going to increase. These achievements highlight the India's dedication into the sustainable development, its emergence as a global leader in the clean energy transition. So far in this fiscal, India added 23 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity in five months. Now, this is the this is a feat of that most nations cannot achieve in the several years, 23 gigawatt in five months. And I'm quite hopeful another at least 23 gigawatt in another coming days we are going to achieve it. We are ranked fourth uh, total uh, renewable energy capacity, fourth in wind, third in solar power capacity worldwide, ahead of many advanced economies. Friends, in the last 10 years, India has become the world's fourth largest economy. Very shortly, we are going to become the third largest economy also. A leading voice in digital transformation, a driver of, driver of global supply chains, and now a central player in clean energy transition. Just as India's IT and digital revolution transformed the global technology in 2000s, India's renewable energy surge is now reshaping the world's approach to the energy access, affordability, and climate action. Let us take PM Suregara Mufta Bijali Yojana, that is rooftop solar. It is the largest, the world's largest rooftop. Its ambitious is tremendous. Many times when I go to the, even abroad, when I explain this uh, scheme, people will not be able to imagine for a few seconds. When I say 10 million, that is one crore household, will be powered by a rooftop with the central government financial help, that is subsidy. And it generates more than 30 gigawatt by that itself. And already 2 millions have been installed. When I say this, people will not be able to imagine because some of the country's population is less than this. All put together, some of the nations, the population is less than one crore. But we are installing 10 million, 10 million rooftop solar in two years. Already we have completed 20 lakhs. I think this year, with some of the policy changes, like utility-led model and others, we are going to add 30 lakhs. So another year or so, maximum one and a half year, we are going to achieve one crore. And uh, huge PM Kusum, already two millions, as I already said, it is being achieved. And this, uh, why you are calling it Mufta Bijali? Mufta Bijali, we are calling it because once three kilowatt it is installed, whatever he generates, remaining he is selling it to the discoms. So he is earning also. Not only it is free, he is earning also. His financial sustainability is also taken care. This is the vision of Prime Minister Sri Modi. So that people are now showing the interest. And uh, to number of families that will benefit from Suregar exceeds the population of countries like Australia, Switzerland, Israel, Singapore, many other countries. You see, approximately 51% of the countries have the population under the 10 million. So that is the scale 
which we are operating through PM Surekar scheme, millions of households have become the producer of the clean power. They are supplying the clean power, they are using the clean power, and they are earning also their first, not only climate sustainability, their financial sustainability is also in this there. This is the beauty of the scheme. The IEA has rightly highlighted India's model of distributed solar that can serve as a blueprint for the world. We are proving that clean energy is not a privilege for few, but it is right of all. So both should very, very small households where roof is very, very small, there also we are coming with a plan with a nearby the big roof where it is available, together we are clubbing and providing them, that is, is utility-led model. Means every person, whether it is poor, whether it is rich, whether it is middle class, every one in this country, Prime Minister wants, he should produce green energy, he should enjoy the green energy and also he should earn something or at least he should use the electricity free of cost. That is without affecting the climate. So these are all the things, and India is advancing the energy transition through the democratization of the energy. I challenge anyone to find more sustainable modern that we are implementing here today. For a nation, one of the lowest per capita emission, one of the lowest per capita energy consumption globally, our commitment to transition is truly amazing. You see in the other countries, especially advanced countries, you, you never switch on the AC, you never switch on the heater, you never switch on the light. But the basic things, in our school, in our house, first what will be taught? Whenever you go outside, first we will switch off the AC, first we will switch off the light, first we will switch off the heater. But by basically we are taught, we are taught first switch off all those things. So by that our, and otherwise also for many reasons, our consumption of the energy is very less. Because of the consumption is very less, our emission is very less. But in spite of that, we are taking care of the issue of this climate change, this emission. It is because of the vision of Prime Minister Modi in this direction, the vision has been put into action. Our solar module manufacturing capacity is now at 100 gigawatt. It was almost zero in 10 years, 11 years back. Today it is 100 gigawatt having doubled between March 24 and March 2025. In one year it is doubled also. During the same time our PV cell manufacturing capacity is tripled from 9 gigawatt to 25 gigawatt. And it is, as on date it is 27 gigawatt today. This is the result of bold PLI incentives, competitive bidding, and regulatory reforms. This is India saying, this is, this is India saying to the world, not only will give to be, will be a clean energy consumer, will also be the, a global clean energy manufacturing hub. Our next target is 500 gigawatt of non-fossil capacity by 2030 and 1,800 gigawatt by 2047 when India becomes the developed country, Vikasit Bharat, at that time India's renewable energy capacity will be 1,800 gigawatt and that, that is the time when India celebrates 100 years of its independence. This is the vision of the energy independence, sustainability and prosperity for 1.4 billion Indians and through them for the global energy transition effort. For the sectors like steel, cement, fertilizers and heavy transport, India has a green hydrogen. Will provide a scalable, affordable pathway to net zero. Already dedicated hydrogen hubs are being developed at several ports that is Kandla, Paradeep, and Tutekoran. Let me tell you, we have recently discovered the prices of green ammonia 
at rupees 49.75 per kilogram. It is among the lowest anywhere in the world. It is lowest anywhere in the world. That is the price we have discovered recently. So that's why we are confident we are going to become the green hydrogen hub of the world. Our ambition is to bring the cost of green hydrogen below two dollar per kilogram by 2030, making it more and more competitive. A transition has to work out for everyone in the economy. India's clean energy transition is generating jobs and livelihoods on unprecedented scale. Our renewable energy sector has already generated 1.3 million full-time equivalent jobs across the solar, wind, hydro, biomass, and nuclear energy. These jobs are not limited to the cities. They are transforming rural India, where the solar and wind projects are creating local employment and building the self-reliance. And it is not just India that benefits by this movement, it is not India that, that benefits. Our clean energy scale, cost reduction, and impact other countries too. The world has stake in India's success because when India brings down the cost, it makes the clean energy transition affordable for billions everywhere. Jahan bhi ho, unko fayda hota hai. India's leadership in launching the International Solar Alliance, IS, ISA, has mobilized over 120 countries to pursue the clean, affordable solar energy, underlining our role as a global convener for the sustainable solution. The cost per unit also, it was nearly about 12 rupees in 2013-2014. Today it is 2.2 rupees 15 paisa. The Global Biofuels Alliance, launched during India's G20 presidency, aims to enhance the biofuel trade India has achieved 20% of ethanol blending with the petrol five years ahead of its target. Friends, India has always talked about the energy transition in the principles of climate justice. Those with least historical responsibility for the emission cannot be asked to pay highest price for the transition. Let me repeat. Those with the least historical responsibility for the emission cannot be asked to pay the highest price of transition. Yet India, with its low per capita emission, is doing more than most to accelerate the global climate action. As per the Iran's latest report, India's rising renewable energy capacity in 2024 helped to save nearly about 4 lakh crore, over 46 billion US dollars in fossil fuel and pollution-related costs. This is why Voices from IEA, Bloomberg, NEF, and the World Bank continue to emphasize that India's success is essential for the world to meet the climate goals. As we look ahead, I assure you that all that India will not just meet its commitments, it will exceed them. And in doing so, we will offer the template for developing nations everywhere that sustainable growth while energy transition is not only possible, but it is preferable. With lowest per capita emission, we have chosen the highest path of responsibility. With the lowest per capita consumption, we have chosen the highest path of growth. We will continue to light the way, not just for India, but for world. Vasudhai Vakutumbakam, the world is one family. With these words, thank you. I wish this conference a great success and inputs may be kindly passed on to me. Thank you. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.